Okay, I think it's time to get started. Um, so uh, thank you very much for joining me today. My name is Dean McEwen and I'm the director of the Masters of Management Analytics program here at Smith. And I look after the blended uh, cohort of the program. Um, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about the two different formats that we run. So again, thank you very much for joining us. Um, there is the Q and A um, tab in here when using in Zoom. So if you have any questions throughout the webinar, um, you can enter them into that. Um, I also have my my colleagues Alex and Betsy here, so they're going to be doing some of the answering for me uh, as we go through the the assignment. And then a couple will be left towards the end that I can address um, to the group if they're sort of more applicable to everybody. Um, but yeah, please, I encourage questions as we go along for sure. Okay, so let's get started. So you're here for the Master of Management Analytics program here at Smith. There we go. So um, one of the things we do here, you know, if you're not from Canada, but uh, it's really important for us in Canada anyway, and, and really should be important for people around the world, but um, we do a land acknowledgement in Canada to recognize and to build a bit of an awareness around Indigenous people and their land rights in our everyday lives and what we're doing. We live and work on their lands. Um, this land acknowledgement, I mean, it recognizes the history of colonialism and the First Nations, as well as a need for change in settler colonial societies. Um, because I'm the director of the blended program, I started to do some research into which Indigenous communities I should include in my land acknowledgement. And our program literally includes students from across Canada, right? And generally, our students come from, you know, provinces and territories that touch on three different oceans. And so this map is sort of what I discovered, the depth, the breadth, and the reach of Indigenous communities across Canada. Um, so it, I want to ask you to sort of think more critically and comprehensively about Indigenous history, especially where we live, learn, and play. You know, I'm asking you to sort of discover which Indigenous lands you live on, and what do you know about this territory? And what do you know about the Indigenous culture? You know, what kind of events and traditions, et cetera, are unique to your space. And I encourage you to read and develop an understanding of the 94 calls of action identified in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's findings. You know, I, I personally have made a difference by supporting call number 57, which is learning about Indigenous peoples and not only educating myself, but encouraging others to learn as well. And although I'm not an expert, I'm happy to share the resources that I've used on my own journey. Uh, and the 93rd call to action asks newcomers to Canada to learn about the Indigenous people in Canada. And I would encourage you to learn about their traditions and ways of knowings as you build a new life in Canada as well. Now, over to analytics. So at uh, School of Business, we've actually, this is actually the 10th year that we've been running the Masters of Management Analytics program. Um, and during that time, we've developed quite a substantial ecosystem at, inside the Smith School of Business at Queen's University. So we do have the MMA program, but five years ago, we actually established the Masters of Management in Artificial Intelligence program. We also have research-based programs like an MSc in analytics and a PhD in analytics, and we have a variety of executive education offerings as well. And support... Gene comes from a number of applied research centers and labs. So a lot of our faculty are doing uh, research and current applicable research around analytics and digital transfer inside organizations as well. And that really is the foundation that drives our course and our course content and our curriculum. Okay, and what is this MMA degree? So this is a full master's degree that you will get in 12 months. You can expect uh, exceptional academic rigor as you study. Um, evaluations include exams, assignments, team projects, and presentations. It's not a situation where you pay your money, you get your degree. Um, you definitely have to work very hard for it because again, it is a full master's degree in 12 months. And so, you know, and it's designed for today's working professionals as well. Uh, this MMA degree can really help you launch your career. If analytics and digital transformation is sort of an area that you're you know, close and dear to your heart, this degree will help you build upon your existing strengths 
and overcome some of your weaknesses and stuff and be able to push it forward to build a strong, strong, strong career. Um, and one of the other things too, is it helps you to learn to work effectively with other people, right? That is extremely important because you can do the best technical work, you can do or build the best model possible, but if you can't explain it and you can't work with other people inside the organization, you're gonna have a little bit of trouble. So it's an important opportunity to sort of practice your communications and your storytelling around data. And uh, we're very happy to be able to offer this program now in two delivery formats. So we do have a classroom-based one in Toronto, and we also have the blended one, which um, I'm the director of. Now, what's this all about analytics? So these are, you know, this is sort of like my pyramid um, that I want to have for any kind of analytics. And if you look at the curriculum and the program, we sort of follow this transition as well. So the first thing is you can't do any kind of analytics without having verified and trusted data. You have to be able to figure out how to get that data, how to clean the data, how to prepare the data. And so we've got courses that, uh, that address that. There's also four different types of what I call progressive analytics. And so these are each of these analytic types, uh, they're each equally important and they build upon one another to make sure you help with your success, right? And so I'm gonna talk about those four different types on the next slide. But ultimately what we all wanna get to, right? Is this sort of pinnacle, the top piece of the pyramid where we get into artificial intelligence and automated decision-making. But when you think about what's going on there, when you're developing a computer system that's going to, you know, not only analyze the data for you in real time, but make decisions for you in real time. If you think something like pricing, right, that happens in real time, somebody queries, you analyze the data, you provide a price. Um, if you're doing the wrong suggestion or the wrong decision is being made, you're not just doing it once or twice. You're actually going to be doing it thousands of times in a large organization. So it's really important that you got this foundation and this pyramid is strong with that verified and trusted data down below, understanding the different types of analytics and ultimately getting into an artificially intelligent decision-making system. Now, what is analytics? So these are the four different progressive analytics. Uh, descriptive analytics really is, you know, what happened? Um, you know, how many widgets did you produce this month, right? It describes exactly what happened. Um, it's a quantifiable number that you can use to help, you know, decision-making and that kind of stuff, but it talks about what was. And of course, in business, everybody wants to know what's next. They don't, what was is important, but what's next seems to be the more important part. So that's when we start getting into modeling and predictive modeling and predictive analytics, because that's really about what will happen. But, and this is a big but, um, the problem with predictive analytics is that all these models are determined on a set or a linear kind of path forward. And as soon as you get into a hiccup, like a pandemic or something like that, all your predictive models are pretty much toast, right? Your data sets are skewed, your modeling is, is, needs to be rebuilt completely. And so it becomes a real problem for you and the organization. And that's where we get into what we call prescriptive analytics. Prescriptive analytics is about how to make it happen. How do you optimize your operations to make sure or to sort of guarantee an outcome that you expect? So for example, um, you know, prescriptive analytics, a great way of doing this is like pricing analytics. And when you price something like, let's say an airplane seat, right? As soon as that airplane takes off from let's say Toronto to Amsterdam, if there's an empty seat on that plane, that is completely and entirely lost revenue. If you could sell that seat for a dollar, then that's a dollar and extra revenue that you would have made. And so when you use optimization processes and prescriptive analytics and pricing analytics, you can make sure that you price those seats on that airplane to ensure that every single seat is sold at some good price that helps you cover your expenses on that airplane because that's the key. And that's where prescriptive analytics really comes into play is sort of optimizing that, making sure that hotel room is full, making sure that that equipment is solid and the maintenance schedules have been maintained and that you don't have to worry about downtime. And that's really prescriptive analytics. Now the next step is when we get into cognitive analytics. And so cognitive analytics is when it takes all of these things together 
and then develop a computer system that uses that information and that data to actually come up with a decision in real time for your organization. So it looks like and analyzes the descriptive analytics piece. It thinks about and runs it through models. Then it goes into the prescriptive analytics piece and then it makes a decision automatically so people don't have to get involved so it can make lots of decisions all at the same time. And we talk about all these different types of analytics in this program. Now the program structure, right? So who are we and what are we doing here? This is a, we're a business school and we're offering a pretty technical program here. The issue here is that we offer a broader approach to solving problems. And in fact, that's exactly where we start the, uh, what I call the, the adventure of analytics. We want to understand what the problem is that the business is trying to solve. You don't want to even think about data. You don't want to think about technology. You don't want to think about AI. You have to understand what the problem is. And so once you've got a clear idea of that, then you start developing a hypothesis. You say, okay, well, what's going on with this hypothesis? What do we think is going to be the solution to this? Once we got that down, then we start thinking about, okay, what kind of a data am I going to need to collect for this? What kind of technologies can we launch or to use in order to solve this problem? And then we build it. And once you build it, you test it and you test and you learn from those foundational pieces. You figure out what needs to be done and then you, you implement it if it is actually doing and behaving the way you expect it to behave. Now, that's a very short summary of what actually happens behind the scenes. And most of the people here who are logged on understand that it's way more complex than that. But those are basically the steps that we'll be looking at in this program as well, to taking it from identifying that business problem to operationalizing a system that's going to help you solve that problem and help you make decisions effectively. And the other part of this uh, program too, and again, back to our business school roots, is really getting into developing leaders, okay? We have a substantial part of interactions and team interactions in this program. There's team coaching going on as well. And there's a whole bunch of what we call power skill courses in the program I'm gonna talk about in a second that help to develop you as a future business leader. Now, here's our, our actual analytics curriculum. Um, you see we have these method courses on the left-hand side of your screen. So we teach you how to do analytics. We teach you how to do predictive modeling. We teach you how to do pricing analytics. And then we have application courses, right? So we teach you how to apply that knowledge into marketing, into operations, supply chain, and into finance. And then we have a couple of electives. So you again, think about yourself and what your career path you're looking at here. Um, so you get to choose one of these two electives, whether it's analytics project leadership or entrepreneurship and innovation. So if you're kind of thinking about, mm, you know what, I wanna do something entrepreneurial. I wanna build my own app, gather my own data, do my own analysis, that kind of stuff. Or you wanna do something outside of the norm, something very innovative, right? So you've got an entrepreneurship and innovation course that you can take. And if you're just thinking about, you know, running these things, when you get into analytics and artificial intelligence, the project and the project scope really needs to be managed very carefully. And it needs to be led, not just looked at and managed. You need people who can actually lead these projects. And so that's where analytics project leadership course comes into play. And then finally, we have what we call power skill courses, and these really get back to our you know, business school roots, right? So we've got AI and ethics, which is all about how do you approach decision making in your organization? How do you make sure that your ethical considerations align with your organization's ethical considerations? And how do you make decisions around that? Uh, we also have a leading change course, which is about change management. And as you know, as a company is digitally transformed, there's a lot of change management that has to be looked after and controlled as you go that. So we have a whole course in understanding that as well. Okay, now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have two basic um, delivery methods. So there's an in-person format. This in-person format is classroom-based. It is in Toronto, downtown Toronto. We've got a beautiful classroom facility uh, basically across the road from the Metro Toronto Convention Centre at uh, Simcoe in front. Um, we have two start dates. So actually the, the spring start for that program is 
I think it's like actually in two weeks time or next week even. Um, and so, uh, so that one won't be happening. The first date won't be happening until April, 2024 for that. So our next date um, for start is January, uh, 2024. Uh, and so that program is one night every week and then one full weekend day bi-weekly and it's a 12 month program as well. Okay, we also include two one week sessions in Kingston uh, at Queens here. Um, and so those are an opportunity for you to travel from Toronto to Kingston. Um, once you're here, basically you have to travel from Toronto or wherever you are to Kingston. Once you're here, we'll put you up in a hotel, we'll feed you, we'll do all that kind of stuff. We look after you for the full week. And it's really important to uh, to have these sort of uh, immersive sessions in Kingston, because this is where you're going to learn about teams. You're going to be introduced to your teams and your coaches. And uh, this is where you kick off your next academic journey. And of course, throughout the program, um, you still get the ongoing coaching, networking and career support that you get with all the Smith programs. Now, the blended learning format, uh, we actually have only one start date. So we start in January each year. So the next blended one to start is January 2024. Um, it is a blend of self-paced online learning and live online classes. Again, it's a 12-month program. What we do is we have, um, because we have students across the country and a whole bunch of different time zones, um, we do sort of plan most of the courses are on weekends. Um, usually Saturday, we'll have two courses, one in the morning, one in the afternoon for about three hours each. And then we get our professors to provide a whole bunch of sort of um, what we call asynchronous content, right? So uh, it'll be on content on our course websites. And then we use our classroom time for interaction and discussions and teamwork and that sort of thing. Um, this program is great because literally you can take it from anywhere in the world as long as you have internet access. Uh, this one we have, again, two sessions. Um, there, next year, actually, we'll, we'll both be in Toronto. Um, so there's a one week opening session in January, and then there's a one week closing session in uh, in Toronto in December as well, or November, December. There's always a week that's half November, half December. That's the week we do our closing session. Uh, and they'll both be in Toronto next year. And again, even though it's a blended learning program, we still have ongoing coaching, networking, and career support as well. Now we are, yes, we're a business school. Yes, it's a technical degree. And so we have a number of technologies that we use and utilize in the program as well. Um, these are some of the few. And certainly if, if there's something new, because technology is constantly changing, um, you know, you're free to, to bring in tools that you like to use as well. And so we can have those discussions um, about what's better, what's the best of Snowflake or Databricks or SAS, um, you know, and using traditional SQL and that kind of stuff in Azure. So um, lots of opportunities there, but we have access to Snowflake instances and Databricks and uh, we use Microsoft Azure underlying all that too. Now, who's doing the teaching? So we have a number of outstanding faculty members. Um, we have both tenure track faculty and we also bring in a few adjuncts as well from industry. Now, the reason we do that is because A, our faculty are doing all that wonderful research and stuff and they um, come in, they teach the courses, they know what they're doing, they have a great number of, number of years of experience teaching and so they provide a great experience. We do go to adjunct faculty, bringing in people from industry. Quite often, they're actually our graduates. So over the past 10 years, we'll bring people in. And usually that's so you can really understand the application of the knowledge that we're teaching you. It's important to understand the day-to-day. -day. How does this work? How do analytics work on a regular basis at one of Canada's major banks or in a consulting firm or something like that. So that kind of uh, knowledge and experience to be passed on to the students is very, very important. Uh, they're also, you know, one of the typical things with business schools and business faculty, particularly, um, they do do a lot of consulting as well. So they bring in that kind of real world experience into the classroom too. And then overseeing this whole process in our analytics ecosystem, we have this Smith Analytics and AI Advisory Board. 
Now these are here just three pe people on it. We have about I think there's about 30 people on the advisory board right now. But uh, Mark Schaefer, he is actually the chair of the advisory board, and then Lori Bieda from uh, Bank of Montreal. She is she oversees our um, our partnerships committee on the board, and Gary Kearns helped us with the the curriculum committee. And so each of these people they bring in tremendous knowledge, right? Tremendous work experience. Disney is by far one of the most data forward companies on the globe um, and some of the experiences that uh, you know they share with us. And more importantly is they actually keep us in check to make sure that our curriculum and our courses and our textbooks and all of our information is current. It's what these companies need to hear and need their employees to know when they're doing the hiring piece. So they wanna be able to know that our MMA grads are perfectly suited for their organizations. And so there's nothing better than working for a company like Disney or BMO or RBC and TD and Canadian Tire and stuff. All these organizations hire from our program and uh, their people, their staff help us make sure that our degree is super relevant and that our students are completely hireable. Now, getting back to that student experience piece as well. So as a student at Smith, you have access to a whole bunch of professional workshops, um, both technical and business oriented ones. So things like having difficult conversations, having communications help, um, technical workshops, we run Python, SQL, Tableau, SAS, uh, Snowflake, Databricks, they all come in and do technical workshops for us to introduce you to their products. There's a number of clubs, plus there's also an opportunity for you to create your own clubs as well. And so, for example, you know, Women in Analytics is a group that was created by female students in the program. And so they've been pushing that along as well. And uh, as a student in the program, each cohort has its own student leadership group, um, almost like a student government. And so that's an opportunity for you to sort of run for office basically and represent your fellow students with the administration and with alumni and that kind of stuff. So again, a great opportunity it shows up well on your resume and uh, gives you that experience of working with different people as well. And we also have a number of cross program sort of groups that you can get involved with. We do have the Scotiabank Center for Customer Analytics, which is a research based center with Scotia. And uh, there's a lot of research um, opportunities for them to work as well. Um, Quaff is the Queen's University Alternate Asset Fund. So if you want to invest some money, there's a good opportunity for you to do that because it's actually real money. And it's quite a large group of people that work on that. So, and it's cross program. So we've got full-time MBA students, we've got master of finance students, we've got MMA students and MMAI students as well. And again, we have the Equity, Diversity and Inclusion Club, which is a run by students, but again, cross program. So that brings in other MBA students, uh, Master of International Business, a whole bunch of different student representatives from different programs. So again, a good opportunity for you to get involved with others and network. And who are you in the class with? So our current class, um, the average age is 32, but the important part there is the range, right? We start with people as young as 22 and we've got people as old as 52. Um, and when you think about what those ages bring to the program, right? Because remember, it's a team-based program. Uh, so, you know, young people bring in the great technical acumen. They can code like they're, you know, like nothing stopping them. And then you've got the older people who come in with the business knowledge and the business acumen and the politics, and they understand how to make these things actually happen. And so you've got this scenario inside a team where both of them, the older people and the younger people are all working together and understanding each other and learning from one another. So that's really important. Uh, most of our, um, most of our students have some kind of management experience. They've been in the workforce for seven, eight years. And so they understand what it's like working with people and they've got that, and that, that value and that experience that they can bring into the classroom for our discussions and that sort of thing as well. Okay, and then, you know, it's not missed on us that a lot of people take these programs to really develop their career. Uh, so we have a, a very substantial career management framework as well. And inside that framework includes a whole bunch of different options to help you build up 
and, uh, you know, develop your strengths and, you know, think about your career. Where do you want to go? You know, it's not just like the job board. We do have a job board, but it's not just a job board. It's not about your next job. It's about planning out your whole career. So if you think, you know, one day I want to be in that C-suite, our career coaches can actually help you sort of establish some touch points um, throughout your entire career. So you really need to do this. You really should think about that. If you want to get into retail, then you know this is where you begin, and these are the checkpoints that you need to accomplish. And uh, and they can help you with things like interviews, cover letters, resumes, all that kind of stuff. Um, but really prepare you and help you develop what you call your personal brand. So when you sit down in that first interview and they say, "Tell us about yourself," you've actually got a prepared brand statement that you can give to them that's been vetted by our professional coaches and worked on by you to make sure it reflects who you actually are. So again, great, great resource for any student um, in our program, whether you're currently looking for a job or if you're very happy with your current company, but you wanna advance inside that organization, again, career coaches can help you out with that. It's not just about finding a job. And then we also have, um, some optional professional certifications here as well. Um, now, the, the kicker with these things is that by participating in the program, you don't automatically meet the requirements for these certifications. So there's still a lot of work that you need to do. Um, but for the Project Management um, Institute certifications, for example, if you take the Project Leadership course, it counts uh, as 28 hours towards your PMP educational requirement for that. Um, the same thing with, well, SAS and Informed, you both have an exam, you have to have to write as well, but we can provide you with the materials and the preparation stuff to get you there if you wanna do those certifications. Now, what does it take to get into the program? So it is a master's degree, so you do need to have an undergraduate degree from a recognized university. And inside that, you know, or inside your degree, you need at least one mathematics or stats course that covers things like linear regression and how to apply that. Um, and we'd be looking at, you know, a strong B, B plus A in those courses as well to make sure that you, you know, you can do the math and the stats because there is quite a bit of that in this program. And we want to make sure that you're going to be successful. Um, minimum two years work experience. So this is really important for us because of the classroom experience that you're going to have. You want to be, you know, contributing with real experience. So I've been in the job. I know what happens. I've seen this fail. I've seen this work. Those are the ideas that we want discussed in a classroom environment. And so it's really important to have that two years of work experience preferably in some kind of an analytics field, but certainly with some kind of quantitative knowledge in there. We have a lot of accountants and, and professional engineers, um, industrial engineers who wanna come in and take this program. And so we wanna be able to see that uh, quant background uh, to know you're gonna be successful. We also need to see two letters of reference. Um, they do not have to be academic references. We're happy to take, you know, preferably a supervisor at work and then maybe even a coworker or another supervisor at work that you've had, um, as long as we get the two letters of references. Uh, we do need official transcripts from your undergraduate institution. Um, and so that is also very important. We can actually do an assessment and we can go through and in some cases we'll even send an offer out with an unofficial transcript because a lot of people have access to those very easily and official transcripts can sometimes take a long time. Um, but we will need an official transcript before you actually start the program. That's the important part. Um, if you are an international student or you had your undergraduate education at an international school and you have trouble getting official transcripts, uh, we will accept uh, a WES assessment, a detailed WES assessment, along with um, you know, copies of your unofficial transcripts. We can balance that off. So that's going to be really important for you. Um, to start your application, we need a resume and a cover letter. Uh, that'll get you started. Ultimately, you'll have an interview with the director of the cohort that you're applying to. And then a lot of business schools require a GMAT, uh, a GMAT score. We always kind of say, or at least I always say, I'd rather have you learning Python programming than studying for a GMAT. So talk to us first if you think that that's a concern. We will let you know if you need to do the GMAT for sure.
Now, what next steps? So we have um, what we call a rolling admissions. We don't have any cutoffs for these programs. So basically the cutoff really becomes when the class is full, we do run wait lists for classes um, and then we can, uh, you know, push your application to the next start date if you're a little bit late. But it is important to start your application as quickly as possible to get into the queue so we can look at you and understand who you are. And again, we have rolling admissions. So we will send out um, offers of admission as your application is complete and as your interview is completed and as everything else comes out there. And so, so it is possible. And in fact, for Blended last year, I ran a wait list um, starting in September. So it's really important to get that stuff in there as quickly as possible. Now, what will happen is as soon as you give us your resume and your cover letter, and you, you know, if you've seen our website, there's some, you know, get to know you kind of button, you fill in that form, you submit your resume, maybe an unofficial transcript, or maybe a cover letter at that time. Uh, we will then assign you an application advisor. And the application advisor will actually work with you to make sure that your application is as strong as possible. So they'll do a preliminary assessment based on the, the resume, and your cover letter and, and uh, transcript, and they'll let you know uh, where you kind of stand in general. You know, what do you need to work on? Where do you need to go from here? Do you need to beef up your stats skills or you need to complete a you know a stats or math course at your at the undergraduate level before you can take this program? You know, confirming that you've got two years of work experience, all that kind of stuff. So that's where the application advisor comes in. And they basically will um, be your advocate at some point, right? So once you've got your application complete, they will come to me as the director and say, you know what, I've got this great candidate, they're all set, ready to go, let's do an interview, and then boom. And so they're your number one, your number one fan as you apply to the program, and they're the ones who are gonna look after you throughout this entire process. So the sooner you get that information into us, the better, because then they can help you to the fullest. Now, some of you might be aware that um, we have a uh, what we call a pathway into the MMA program through the MITx Micro Masters program in Statistics and Data Science. Um, what this program does is it provides you with um, advanced credit for two courses that we offer in the program, both Introduction to Analytical Modeling and Predictive Modeling, and which ultimately re results in a reduction in program fees. There is one what I would say hesitation in this program though, uh, unless you've already completed this program, I would certainly suggest um, not starting it before you start our program. Uh, basically what happens here is that this uh, micro master's program takes two years to complete and our entire degree takes 12 months to complete. Uh, and there's it's a pretty hefty price point in there as well. So if you haven't started it, you know, I would certainly recommend just applying to our program first and then going through that process. You just don't save that much amount of money. Um, and what you do is you gain a lot of time because it would be two years doing the MicroMasters plus a year doing our program, um, whereas you could just do one year of our program. Okay. Now for the 2023 fees, um, so it's uh, domestic is $43,840 Canadian. For international students, it's $79,900 Canadian. Now, this is a what we call a program fee. So this program fee includes tuition, includes all your books, learning materials, includes the math, the meals, and the accommodations for our residential sessions. It also includes all the software licenses and access to Azure, Snowflake, and Databricks. Uh, the total amount can be paid over three installments plus your deposit as well so make it a little bit easier for you because i know it's quite expensive um, but uh, but it is like an all-inclusive fee and then when you're financing your education as well um, we do have a relationship with rbc for a student line of credit which is available to domestic students only this program is OSAP eligible. So OSAP is the Ontario Student Assistance Plan. And usually other provinces recognize that it's OSAP eligible. And so you would be available or accessible to um, the student assistance plans in those different provinces as well. Um, there are some scholarship opportunities. Uh, they are quite limited and there's not that many of them, but we do have a scholarship 
um, for black students. And we have a scholarship for indigenous students. And we also work with the Vector Institute for Artificial Intelligence and they have a, a scholarship each year as well. And so that's available to people um, going forward. Now, one thing as a quick summary to, to this whole talk and the whole premise of this program and the fact that we're a business school offering this technical degree, we really do feel that it is about business, right? It's not just about theory and computer science. This is really about how to develop business value. And we've seen this over the past 10 years of running this program, that there's been tremendous business value has been created through the use of analytics and using the insights that we find in supporting you know, corporate decision-making and stuff. Um, there's tremendous value there. And we also know that analytics is not just about the technology, but it's about people. And so you need to have strong power skills in order to be successful in analytics and in business. So you do need to be able to develop a vision where you want to go. You do need to be able to develop a strategy of what you're going to do to fulfill that vision and ultimately leadership, right? You're going to need leaders to lead the teams to make sure that this happens and that this is successful. And that results in the huge need for change management skills. You have to understand the people that you're working with. You have to be able to pick out the people who are literally the movers and shakers and the supporters of what you're doing. And so they're gonna be very important. So you gotta work on your skills of like conflict resolution and persuasion to be able to make this kind of change happen. And of course, it's all about people again and teams. You have to be able to work very successfully in teams. You gotta collaborate with others. You have to listen to what they have to say. And you have to understand those different perspectives on how to approach business problems. And then that is where the, the basically the springboard into the technical and to the analytics and to the data and the AI that's gonna be implemented. And that's where you're gonna get into a digital culture in the end. And ultimately that's the goal for most organizations today is to be able to forget about the old pen and paper kind of world and start thinking digitally and thinking about how you're going to be successful in this new world that we've got. So the next question is, are you ready? Are you ready to start this adventure? And if you are, please reach out, um, start your application. Like I said, these we do often have wait lists and things. So it's important that you start the uh, start your application as quickly as possible. Get connected to our application advisor so they can help you with the application process. And remember, there's no fee to apply. So really there's nothing out there except you submitting a couple of documents to us to get started and to get that assessment completed. Um, this QR code on the screen right now is the link to my LinkedIn profile. So I encourage you to use that and connect with me on LinkedIn. We have um, quite a large group of people talking about analytics and business all the time. And uh, it would be great to uh, hear your voice in that as well. So please, I encourage you to connect. Now, let's see if we've got any questions and answers left over for me. Okay, is this program exclusively geared to commerce? Would completing this program prepare one for government third sector work? Um, yeah, so I would certainly, yes. I mean, we're a business school. Uh, this is not a public administration program. So we're not specifically dealing with things like policy and, and governments and that sort of thing. But, um, it all kind of applies, right? Even government has a business to accomplish and they have certain ideas and marketing and finance and, and supply chain and stuff. All that is totally relevant to, to government and to uh, not-for-profits and stuff as well. Um, the great thing about governments is they have lots and lots of data. Uh, and the question is how do they use that data and where do they use it? So. Um, in the blended program specifically, we do have quite a few um, government employees take that program. Um, and again, across the country, we've had people in healthcare in the Yukon, we've had people in the Justice Department at the BC, uh, we've had a number of people from Department of National Defense, um, and it just goes on and on from there because there's, there's still that value. So when I say business value, it's a small B business value, not just capital B. So I think that that would work. Um, and then analytics to uh, increase efficiencies in courts, for sure. Um, 
you know, one of the things we actually, one of our research centers right now is with the faculty of law at Queens. And we've got what they call a conflict analytics lab. And they develop tools to do exactly that, to increase efficiencies. They've, they've been using data sets like um, former cases. One of the great things about the Canadian law system is that everything is written down. And so that is a huge resource and data set for us to use things like natural language processing to be able to pull that information out of some of those cases and the, um, uh, the results of those cases and to be able to sort of predict how a future case will be resolved according to the law. And so they've developed this huge system. Um, happy to uh, point you in the right direction. It's Professor Samuel DeHaan over in the Faculty of Law that heads that up. Okay. And Alexandra says, uh, my question is related to synchronous classes for the blended program uh, and in-person classes for the in-present program. Uh, how many days a week do we have synchronous in-person classes? So in the Toronto in-person classroom, you go to class one evening a week and then one full day every other week on a weekend. So think of it on Wednesday night, you go from class from 5.30 to 9.30. And then on Saturday, you go to class from like the nine o'clock until 5 p.m. Those change, those times might change over time, but um, that's generally the gist of it. And you'd go to that class every other week. Each class for the in-person one is about 28 hours of in-class time. Um, and then when you're looking at the blended program, the blended program has a little bit of a smaller commitment um, for the actual class time or synchronous time because we put more information online. So whether that's recordings, whether that's text-based stuff and presentations and that kind of thing. Um, so it's a little bit different. So you can probably expect about 20 hours of class time on for the synchronous classes for the blended program. Okay, what types of careers do students with the MMA degree get? Um, oh, I, oh, and is there a co-op program? So there's no co-op program because the, this, this degree program is really designed for working professionals. Um, so most people will have a full-time job as they take this program. Um, so we don't have a co-op. What we do have, and this is certainly accessible to international students who probably won't have a full-time job as they take the program, um, we do have uh, MyTax as a funding organization in Canada, and they have a business strategy initiative internship. And so you can join one of those internships if you want. So there's that opportunity. Um, types of careers, like analytics is everywhere. Analytics is, is just um, every single industry, every single level of knowledge, analytics is extremely important. So um, what I always recommend people to do, because we have, well, I don't know, there's well over, I think there's like 15 or 1600 graduates of our program so far. Um, what I would recommend, hop on LinkedIn and uh, just do a quick search for people who have graduated from Smith with an MMA degree. And you'll be able to see, because LinkedIn is basically everybody's resume, You'll be able to see the career progression for people. You'll be able to see when they graduated from the MMA program, and you can see where their current job is and all the different steps that they've taken to get to that role. So um, again, it's uh, you know um, a great resource to be able to do your own analytics and your own data mining uh, just on LinkedIn itself. Uh, are there many students pursuing consulting careers after graduating for this program? Yeah, I would say that the number one or the largest pool of people go into finance. Um, you know, the banks, they've all got lots of money, so they've got the deeper pockets. Um, the second largest group would go into consulting and all kinds of consulting, right? We've got, you know, the big consulting firms like Deloitte and McKinsey and Boston and um, KPMG and EY and, and PwC, um, but you also got smaller, more boutique um, consulting, and you've got a lot of individuals who just go out and do individual consulting as well. Um, so, you know, it definitely lends itself because when you think about what you do as a consultant, right, you start thinking about that business problem and identifying the root cause analysis. Um, that's basically exactly what we do with analytics and artificial intelligence. Okay, I saw there are optional international study trips offered with the online blended format. So um, basically, it's it, that 
those trips are not necessarily just for the blended um, program. We've been opening them up over the past few years. Uh, we've also started to include international study trips with our uh, alumni as well. And so this is something that's kind of come out of the pandemic because we couldn't offer things before. And so we have a, a large group of students who couldn't do any international travel. So we've opened it up to them. Uh, another trip that uh, I do every year, um, uh, Disney actually has, you saw Mark Schaefer earlier on, he's the chair of our board. Uh, Disney offers the Disney Data and Analytics Conference every year in August. And so we usually bring our group of people down to it as well. Um, and so each year we end up in Orlando. So <clears throat> there's that. Um, this year there was a group of students went to Issa Day in Barcelona. A group went to Singapore. Uh, there was a group going to Scotland as well. And so um, these, these trips are available to you. Uh, the hard part, of course, is that as a student in a 12 month program, you don't have a lot of time to do these sort of trips, right? And so that's another reason why we're kind of offering them to alumni right now, um, if you're interested in doing that. But, uh, you know, we can certainly talk about that as an optional piece. Okay, what is the post-graduation employment rate? So, um, uh, MacLean, that's that's an interesting question because, like I said, most of the students are working full time when they're in the program, and so you can expect most people are working as they finish the program as well. Um, and uh, and then there's a related question here that says, is there a hundred percent placement in this program? So one of the things about career stuff, so a huge demand for analytics professionals in Canada anyway, um, and certainly in the Toronto area and across Canada as well. Like it doesn't matter what city you are, um, analytics professionals are in high demand. The placement or getting a job because of this, a lot of that is dependent on you and how you present yourself, right? And so that's why we offer you the career management framework to make sure you do it right the first time and make sure you have that foundational piece of a strong resume, strong cover letter, good interview skills, all that part, all that stuff is really important for you and how you present yourself in there. Certainly, um, you know, if I think in traditional business school talk, right, they'll say six months beyond graduation, how many of your employees are employed it is usually uh 95 to 100 percent will be employed that other five percent that might be missing um are generally out traveling around the world backpacking or something like that because they don't want to do the job uh they don't want to work just yet right so um the thing is the important part is if you as an individual want to take the mma program and you want to go out into the analytics world and get a good paying career job um, you can do that. It is totally possible for you to do that. We're going to give you the skills and the knowledge and the ability to be successful doing this, but it takes you to get that placement, right? It's not the school. We don't, we don't take the responsibility of making sure everyone gets a job. We want to make sure we take the responsibility that you've got the skills and the know-how to get the job, and then it's up to you to actually get it. Okay. So I've got one here. So I have an applicant here who wants to marry their finance economic knowledge with data analytics as to leverage it in my finance career. Um, yeah, I mean, we have a whole course in financial analytics, right? Which is taught by uh, a former investment banker actually, who um, knows what it's like to be on the trading floor and be able to run a finance organization and be able to do that. So yeah, you've got a full course in doing exactly what you just mentioned there, but you're also getting the experience to understand things like supply chain and, and marketing as well, which is also very important in finance because when you think about you know investing in an organization, um, we used to do a big analysis a few years ago with um, data from Bloomberg, and then we'd be looking at any time, you know, what, what happened to certain stocks and the valuations of certain companies during weather patterns, right? So, i.e., a hurricane hits Florida, well, guess what? 
um, you know, Home Depot shares go through the roof because you can do that. And that's marrying data that is not traditional for finance, right? You don't really think about weather, bringing that in with sales and that kind of stuff. So those kinds of connections can be made through this program. And uh, again, inside the class, your fellow students, um, a lot of them will be from financial institutions as well. And so you'll be able to have those discussions and say, well, what did you do here? What did you do there? What was successful? What wasn't successful? And then you've got the professors teaching the courses as well. So definitely this is, uh, and again, if you want to get back into entrepreneurship and innovation, uh, that's exactly the, the pieces of the puzzle, right, that get put together. Okay. Okay, so I've got one question here about someone who doesn't have a bachelor's degree. So this is a master's degree. So we do require a bachelor's degree um, completed um, before you can get admission to this program. So unfortunately, that's um, that's one of the hard hard parts of this program. Oh, and the last one is a note to Betsy, thanking her for all of her help. So that's nice to hear too. So thanks, Alexandra. Um, okay, and I think that that's it for all the questions for today. So again, thank you very much for joining me. And uh, I encourage you to uh, get that application in as quickly as possible and be able to um, get into, uh, into the application pool for the January starts for both the in-person and the blended, they both start in January 2024. So we got a little bit of time, but not a lot of time. So um, the sooner you get it in, the better. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining us today and uh, have a good day. Thank you.